in your 101D studies, but if you have an interest in charging procedures and charging methods, that's what we're going to be covering. I've listed 10 different ways that I've heard of through the years, and we're going to talk about the pros and cons of each one. I want to pass this around, and it's just two containers of water. Stick your finger in one and then stick it in the other, and pass it to the next person, if you will. And I've got a good question for you when it comes back. One of the procedures that folks have said works in the past, I don't agree with. And I'm going to explain why that, just that so in just a second. But there's a lot of things that happen out here in the real world that aren't good ways. First of all, why do we want the charge of a system to be correct? What's, what's the big reason behind it? Why can't we just guess around that? Uh, it would mess up the system and again, it could blow up in your face. Okay. Uh, you don't in, order, right. yeah, in order to be able to get the best performance out of the system, more bang for the buck, it needs to be charged correctly. That's in the performance end, okay? As far as your, your uh, efficiency and everything, it's not going to work right unless the charge is correct. Another reason is the life of the equipment is going to be shortened if the charge is not correct. The reason being an overcharge is going to dilute the oil to the compressor. Plus it may do actual mechanical failure. A lot of times compressors fail and the reason that they are diagnosed as being uh, broken is not the reason or the real reason that killed them. Okay, an overcharge, for example, I like to put this into a world that we see every day and understand every day. If I went up to the uh, gas pump and I put in, well, today's prices, uh, <laughs> I got that loan on the way to the gas station and I filled up with gas and I didn't want to waste any of my money because I already paid for it. So I couldn't, I, I filled up and I had the $99, but I had a dollar's worth less, so I just opened up the hood and put the, put the rest of the gas in the oil. The car will still run, but it's going to do damage to it, right? I diluted the oil. Well, that's what happens when liquid refrigerant comes back to the compressors. We dilute, we dilute the oil, we wash out the bearings, and the technician may actually see a mechanical failure where the rotor has gone into the uh, windings and be diagnosed as a uh, electrical failure, not a mechanical failure. But in a sense, it, it really was, bottom line, wrong charge. On the other side of the the uh, coin, if it runs low on charge, there's a problem that the uh, compressor motor is not going to get the proper cooling because most of your compressors rely on the return gas to cool the motor. Okay, we'll take it back to an automobile. If I throw a couple of sheets of paper on my radiator, will my car still run? It will. Oh yeah. But it's going to run hotter than it usually would. And it's going to shorten the life of that, that motor, right? Same thing with an with electrical motor. Heat will eventually destroy it. All right, when you went around with the room with the two containers of water, now i got a question. If it hadn't been too long, what was the temperatures of the two? 32 on, 32 on the water with ice. Yeah. Okay, what about the other one? What do you think the temperature was? Ambient. Okay, one of them was ambient, and, or, or the room temperature, room temperature. and the other was huh? somewhere in the 30, uh, 30s, right? Okay, let's see what we really measure. The warm one, I'm running somewhere around 100 degrees, okay? The one with the ice in it. I'm running about 40 degrees. Well, it's still dropping. I'm running around 37 degrees. Okay? The ambient in here is somewhere around 75. I done got my probe. Uh, it's going to take a while for it to stabilize. 
one of the methods that was used in the past, and I hope that you'll never use this. And I'm going to try to count down here, y'all. Five, six. Y'all ever heard that? I'm going to charge it up until the suction line feels okay. Beer can cold. Beer can cold. Good point. It don't work. All right. Number one, these are good. No doubt. We need our hands. But they're not good instruments for measuring temperature. Okay. If we're dealing with superheat, and that's what we're dealing with, we've got to know two things. We've got to know pressure, and we also have to know temperature. Okay. We also have to have a temperature pressure chart to be able to convert that pressure to a temperature. So when somebody tells you that that suction line feels good and the charge is okay, they're in another world. They, either that or they got talents that I've never seen anybody really have. Okay? All right. Another one which I consider falls in the same category is... Sweat back are sometimes called frost line. Okay? Freezers, uh, some refrigeration, folks will look for the frost line. Or sweat back. Sweat back is the suction line sweating. Well, that, that tells me one thing. Number one, if it's sweating back, this, this is what it tells me. It tells me that the temperature of that line is below the dew point, at or below dew point. Now, what's dew point? Depends on what the RH is in the air. It could be any temperature, within reason, but it doesn't tell me what the charge is. It, it doesn't tell me anything. Frost back, or frost line. You know what that tells me? If I've got ice on the suction line. Now, air conditioning, that could be a problem. Refrigeration, it may not be. It tells me it's below 32 degrees. That's all it tells me. That is, the line's below 32 degrees. What if I send a compressor on a refrigerator or a freezer and that compressor had ice all over it? What's your first thought? Low on Freon. Low on Freon, a refrigerant problem of some kind? Not necessarily. Because, let's take a, 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 a refrigerant, and let's just use, you know, anybody got a temperature or pressure chart handy? Yes, one on the board. Okay. All right. I'm out of the seat here. Okay. The camera, the camera, All right. The R12, if it's, uh, If I'm below approximately 30 pounds of pressure with R12, I'm going to have ice. Okay? Bottom line, I'm going to have ice. It's like this. Let's say that I'm running a freezer, walk-in freezer. Okay, if I'm running that freezer at minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit, what's my evaporator going to be? It's got to be 10 to 15 degrees colder than that, right? Okay, that puts my, we're going to say 15 degrees, my coil at minus 25 degrees. Okay, now, at my suction line, if I have 20 degrees of superheat, or even, tw let's, let's use 20 for a uh, even number here, of superheat, what's that going to put my temperature in my line? Minus five degrees, right? Are we going to have ice? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bet you. We sure are. Is it flooding? No. It's got superheat. So everything could be A-OK. -okay. We can't just go by those kind of uh, indications. We've got to use instrumentation. Okay? Y'all see where I'm headed with this? What folks get by with and the proper way of charging and making the equipment do what it's supposed to do 
you've got to use instrumentation. Okay? All right. As you can tell, I don't care too much for these two methods. But they are tools. I'm not telling you don't pay attention to what it feels like or don't pay attention to whether or not you have swept back or frost line. Those are indicators. But they're not charging methods. Not good charging methods anyway. All right. Let's go to number eight. And I have to think a little bit here. Here's one that I'm going to get some conflict with when I talk to especially manufacturers. I've got to measure the amp draw on my compressor if it's at or near full load amps. What's that tell me? Does it tell me my charge is okay? Yep. No, no, no. If it's not near. In other words, watch me. Uh-uh. Okay. <laughs> Now, I tell you what it does tell me. It tells me that motor is doing the work that it's designed to do. But it may not be doing the work that it needs to do. If there's a problem in that system, that motor may actually be doing the work, but it may not be doing the job. The unit may not be doing the job that it's supposed to be doing. Okay? There's a lot of factors that come in when we measure an amp drop. If we have a variation in the temper or, or, or the uh, uh, voltage coming in, that can change the amp drop. Ohm's law will tell you that. Voltage goes up, what's the amp drop do? For the same amount of work. Down. Goes down. down. And vice versa. So amp draw is a good indicator. <coughs> it's a good tool, but it's not the way to charge a system. I said I may get a little flack about some manufacturers. If I have a controlled environment, everything is perfect, then I may be able to use this method. <coughs> but I wouldn't depend on that. Not at all. Okay? Uh, when you go to the doctor, what they're going to do, they're going to check your temperature. I don't care what, you know, you go and say hello. They're going to check your temperature. They're going to check your pulse. They're going to check your blood pressure, right? Does that tell you that you're okay? No. It's a whole lot more to the physical than that, right? <laughs> yeah. But if you're only going to check those two or three things, or if they go in and they say, okay, you know, I, I, I grew up, had an uncle a doctor and aunt a doctor, and they both was in the same building practicing together. You look at one of them and say, I don't feel too good. One of them will say, you need this, you need that. Another one will look at you and say, ain't nothing wrong with you. <laughs> okay? Or one of them will go, yeah, you're running a little bit of a fever there, aren't you? Well, what that meant is, you wasn't real sick, they wasn't real concerned about you. Go away, boy. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's what that was all about. So, we got, we got to look at the whole picture. We can't just look at just... A portion of it when we when we when we say we need to charge or, or, or check the charge on the system, which brings up another question before I go too far. When should I put those gauges on? Let's take just a moment or two. Give me thirty seconds. Okay. You don't have to cut off, D. I just need to give a break that we can do. <laughs> 